Hello friends, uh, today we will be discussing how to perform an interface to uh, IVM, that is the intravenous stereography. Now today's era of the ultrasound CT and MRI, the question of the role of IVM is always asked. But today also and for the time to come, the IVM will remain the cornerstone, of the cornerstone for the investigation of the genital urinary tract diseases for few reasons which I will uh, be explaining to you in the coming talk. Okay, the, to start with, let us learn few terminologies correctly. So, very commonly, the IVU is interchangeably used for the word IVP, which is an intravenous pilography, though it is not correct. So, the urogram is basically defined as the study of to see the renal parenchyma, collecting system, and the ureter, whereas the pilogram stands for the evaluation of only collecting system, which is usually done by the retrograde view, not by the injection of internal contrast. So practically when reporting and for all purposes, the IVU is the correct term and which should be used. As against the other terms are very uh, self-explanatory like cystography, the visualization of the bladder and the urethrography, the visualization of the urethra. The other term which is very commonly used interchangeably with the contrast, that is a dye, like the dye has been given or which dye has been used. But the dye is term which is used or restricted only for the agent which are used for coloring, okay, to change one color from the other color. But the contrast is the correct term which is basically means the medicine or whatever is given intravenously to opacify the system. So this is a correct term which should be used during the practice. Okay, now what are the indications in current, uh, current day? Basically, the internal serography is basically done to see the, visualize the genital urinary tract and to see its anatomy as well as to determine few pathologies. But two very main indications which are to be followed in clinical practice are the pre and post therapeutic evaluation of the calculi as well as the patient with hematuria. Though it can also be very helpful in evaluating the patients with congenital anomalies, particularly in pediatric patients where the uh, various malformation or uh, absence of kidney or hydronephrosis, uh, antenatal hydronephrosis is there, in those patients IVB is very, very helpful. So all, uh, among all these indications, two major indications are the purple and unknown Now what is the contraindication? Now contraindication can be divided into the absolute and the relative contraindication. The absolute contraindication will be the presence of pregnancy. The other causes or other uh, factors are the relative contraindication, meaning that in the presence of renal insufficiency or thyroidoscopies or other disorders, or even in patient with hypersensitivity to the uh, contrast media, this study can be performed, but with the extra care or extra um, uh, extra protocol needs to be followed. For example, uh, for example, uh, in patient with renal insufficiency. For example, the serum creativity is say 1.5 or 2 or borderline. In those patients, more safer contrast media are available, non agenerated contrast media, for example, the pack, those need to be used. And the other patient with toxicosis or cardiac diseases, in those patients, uh, the pre medication or uh, more extra drugs like life saving drugs need, need to be uh, kept, and as well as the uh, in a hospital setup, the oxygenation and all those facilities should be available. Okay. The contrast media which are normally used are low osmosis contrast media with the 300 to 600 milligram iodine concentration per ml. And the dose typically used is 50 to 100 ml in adults, whereas in pediatric patients, uh, the, particularly above the age of 4 years, the dose is 1 ml per kg. And below the uh, 4 year, the dose uh, is slightly higher. I will explain it later on. Okay. And uh, 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 remember, the patient with uh, uh, preparation, what is the preparation for the IVP? Uh, at the time of appointment itself, the patient is explained what uh, uh, what uh, pre preparation he has to undergo. For example, the bowel preparation, which is very essential, um, though some centers they follow it or some centers don't follow it, but still it is very useful to uh, for patient to get undergo bowel preparation. Usually the tablet Dulcolax and Gasex are given. Uh, the dose is started 
uh, one day or two day prior to the date of the study and uh, the second thing is patient is asked to do kneel by mouth on the day of examination usually the four hour ngm uh, strict protocol is given to the patient but this is again variable for example in patient with uh, diabetic or the pediatric patients in these patients the hydration protocol should be flexible uh, for example in pediatric patient the patient investigation should be done between meals for example when his next meal is going to be followed before two or three hours before that his investigation should be done and in, in the diabetic patient this those patient can have uh, liquid uh, uh, food uh, food not the solid and they can have their tablet on the day of examination after preparing the patient and this another important step uh, in the preparation is we should be prepared we should be ready with the life saving drugs in cases of the patient with a high risk uh, category like patient with who had allergy previously those patients uh, we should we need to give them pre medication typically the methyl prednisone is given the dose is 32 mg uh, is given uh, and it is started 12 hours before the study and 2 hours prior to the study so this will minimize or uh, minimize the uh, chances of having patient reaction okay in positioning after preparing and everything the patient is positioned is asked to lie down supine on the table with the the beam center uh, the vertical ray of the beam is in the midline and the horizontal ray typically at the level of umbilicus between the posterior margin and the pubic center now uh, the 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 beam is collimated such that the uh, the outer part should not be included and the area below the pubic symphysis and the costal margin should be included for example in this film which is a, uh, the preliminary film or control film or short film which is typically 35 by 43 cm larger film here we can see the uh, normal uh, outline but the one factor which is wrong in this film is the the pubic symphysis is not entirely included in this film and what we miss by not including the pubic symphysis is the same patient when the pubic symphysis is included the radio dense calculus density is seen overlying the uh, in the midline which was not seen in this film just because the area of coverage was low so to make sure that the entire uh, the lower border of pubic symphysis as well as the upper uh, supraranal portion of uh, should be included and in patient who are too large where uh, the area is not covered cannot be covered in single film in those patient additional uh, separate pelvic ipv should be obtained for this uh, scout film uh, the role of scout film is it should be evaluated for the area of coverage which we have seen second thing it also has a uh, good idea about the bowel preparation in this case very nice bowel preparation less bowel so the chances of evaluation of the nephrogram or missing the finding during the nephrogram or pyelographic phase will be very less second thing is um, the calcification of obviously the radio dense calcula will be seen and uh, their pores and uh, the number should be uh, located the other calcific densities which are seen are the flebulis and sometimes tubal ligation band so those will be, those will be observed in the uh, plain film uh, and the second thing the some few other diseases which will be manifested which will mimic uh, as a urinary tract pathologies can be picked up on plain film okay for example in this case like this is a scout film taken for the patient uh, before evaluation uh, before uh, observing IV, ivu where we can see the motor lucencies in the left renal cortex so this doesn't does not uh, configurate with any bowel loop and you see the appearance of normal gas the normal gas is here and this is a motor lucencies so this is a definitely not normal and this suggests the presence of the retroperitoneal retro layer uh, and uh, um, indicating uh, or uh, suspicious for the emphysematous pyelonephritis so in this patient there is no need to undergo next step and patient should immediately undergo either ultrasound or ct for further investigation so this itself is picked up on the plain film so this is the uh, use of plain film sometimes though not always uh, we need to modify the uh, technique during the plain film also. for example here in this case where the patient with renal uh, right renal colic is suspected and uh, this radiograph after even after looking carefully we don't see anything abnormal 
but on the same patient when we took the oblique film of the pelvis this radio opacity is seen overlying the sacrum so this bony anatomy is such that we may miss uh, the small calcula here and in those patient particularly if we are following follow uh, following the, this patient up who is known case of the uh, ureteric calculus in this patient particularly the oblique radiograph are very helpful at this stage so after that we will be giving the contrast to the patient and we will uh, taking the film sequentially the contrast material currently uh, which are in use are stated almost exclusively by the glomerular filtration and with subsequent con concentration by in the post glomerular nephron and the progressive specification of the urinary tract so the imaging sequence is designed to optimize the depiction of specific portions of the urinary tract during the maximal contrast material opacification in other words we will be taking the images after a specific period to look the specific area of the genital urinary tract for example this is the film which is taken immediately after injection of the contrast this is a 1 minute film now for this film you must you have noticed that this is a small 24 by 30 cm film which is typically the the area is collimated between the suprarenal and approximately at the level of um, umbilicus so that area is covered in this film and here you can see after 1 minute there is a very nicely uh, opacification of the renal parenchyma this is secondary to the uh, presence of the contrast in the renal tubules so this is the one one minute nephrotic film uh, i will explain later what thing needs to be seen during the nephrotic film after 5 minute the contrast from the renal tubule will be excreted into the calyces and the pelvis and the ureter which will be very nicely seen in in this 5 minute film after the 5 minute film usually uh, the compression is applied um so that the pelvic calyces system and the ureter is very uh, well seen because of the accumulation of the contrast proximal to the compression so in this case typically a uh, compression band is applied around the lower abdomen with the pads in between the uh, belt and the abdominal wall and this typically position between the anterior between the anterior superior allex spine so that the ureter typically the mid ureter will get compressed against the pad at the level of sacrum so it will compress the ureter at the sacrum and the proximal pelvic calyx system will be very nicely opacified but please remember the compression is contraindicated in few cases for example here on the 5 minute film if we see very obvious obstruction then the uh, the compression needs to be avoided at this stage only second thing is if the patient has uh, is a known case of abdominal aortic aneurysm or any of the other abdominal mass which has been picked up on ultrasound or any other modality so in this patient contraindication the compression should not be given patient with recent abdominal surgery or severe abdominal pain or suspected renal trauma in this patient also compression should not be given so what what other uh, way we have to opis by the ureter i will explain it later so this is the post compression film obtained this film can be limited to the ureter and uh, the kidney like that is 24 by 70 centimeter uh, film or it could be a larger film also so in this case we can very nicely see the well uh, opisified ureter and the kidney canal system now other uh, like benefit of compression in this case this is a 5 minute film which uh, which is obtained in a patient where we can see, uh, the pelvic canal system is probably not really opacified we are not very sure whether there are filling defects or this, there are calcula or what we don't know we are we're not sure but after application of the com compression the pelvic canal system is very nicely opacified we are very sure that the the calyces are normal here the papillae are normal there is no stricture nothing so the compression help us to confidently rule out any abnormality in this case after application of the compression the compression is released immediately and the release film is taken now what happens is because of the compression the contrast is concentrated in the proximal pelvic canal system and the ureter and as soon as we release the compression the contrast bolus rushes into the rest of the ureter so we it helps us to eliminate the rest of the ureter so the real film is typically the larger 34 by 70 film and uh, there are other ways to take the uh, film here we can uh, 
uh, we can take oblique views to see the ureter or we can do the, do the spot fluoroscopy. So the oblique is typically patient is asked to turn 35 or 40 degrees either to the right or to the left side and the larger 24 by uh, 34 by 35 by 40 3 centimeter film is taken. So these are the larger oblique uh, film where the ureter pores can be seen very nicely. And these are the spot fluoroscopic images. These are these depict the entire course of ureter and as well as the luminal surface of the ureter nicely. After acquiring the release film and visualizing the ureter, by this time, usually by uh, 15 to 30 minutes, the bladder is itself gets get opacified, and uh, we take the full bladder film. So, so before taking the full bladder film, there are few modi modification in the position. The X-ray tube is typically angled caudal in the direction of the foot by 15 degree and the, the beam is centered 5 centimeter above the pubic symbiosis so that the entire outline of the bladder can be seen. Now this similar technique is applied for the post word film also. So this is typically the a small full bladder film where we can see the homogeneous contrast of direction of the bladder. The entire outline of the bladder is seen and the Please note, we do not see the just thin uh, outline of the bladder wall is seen, but not distinct. And this is the immediate post void film, normal post void film, where we can see the normal uh, ureteral uh, ridges, mucosal ridges, which are which should normally be less than 3 cm. So, this, this we have covered the normal uh, uh, positioning and as well as normal film sequence, which we are usually taken. It is the full KUB film followed by the 1 minute film, followed by the 5 minute film, followed by the compression, then release film. After that, there is a full water film and the post water film. So, usually by 30 to 45 minutes, normally the entire uh, procedure or a maximum to 1 hour entire procedure is over. So, now let us see what each uh, thing will help us to each film, what, what we are going to interpret in each film. Okay, as uh, as on plain, plain KUB, I, have, uh, I told you that it is helpful to uh, certain the coverage, the exposure factors, the other pathologies, the calcification, where are the calcina, what are the other calcification, what are the contraindications, for example, presence of abdominal aortic aneurysm itself can be depicted on the plane film. On one in a one minute image, permanent film will, will be seeing the size, the axis position, contour and parenchymal thickness of the kidney. And on the next image, we are going to evaluate the pieces of system abnormality. So this is the one minute film where we are, uh, the kidneys are very nar no, uh, nicely opacified. These are the nephrographic films where we see the size of the kidney, which are usually ranged from 9 to 13 centimeters. The left kidney is slightly bigger than the right kidney, uh, by difference of 0.5 centimeters. As well as that, here we can see very clearly the right kidney is smaller than the left kidney. Okay. And the other criteria, like uh, on the image itself, the normal kidney should measure at least three or three and a half lateral body heights. If it is less than that, then it gives us clue to the size of the kidney. The small size can be picked up. Now, now axis and position. Now here, you see the kidney. The usually they cross the twelfth rib on both sides, and the the axis is such that it parallels the border of the Soas muscle, sorry, it parallels the border of the psoas muscle. So the medial pole is upper pole is more medial and the lower pole is more lateral, paralleling the psoas muscle. If there is any deviation in the axis, like this, here we can see the mid upper pole is laterally deviated on either side, the lower poles are medially rotated and they are appearing as if they are fusing with each other and they are crossing over the psoas muscle. So this is uh, definitely change in extended position, typical case of the horseshoe shaped kidney. Okay, and we can see the dilated uh, elevator system here also. Next is the contour. Now normally the kidney should have very smooth and out outline or contour in its entirety. Here we can see a depression or notch like things. But whenever we see any defect or notch like things, always examine the underlying elevator system. If it is normal, there is no abnormality, there is no distortion. So these are the here, there is a notch, 
and here we can see a bulge. But again, the under, an underlying pelvic system is very nicely opposite. So these are the normal variation uh, which are seen. As again that, if you see here on the left side, on the nephrotic film, we see the bulge in the contour. There is a nephrotic feeling defect kind of thing, and associated distortion of the pelvic analysis system. Similarly, here we see large area of nephrotic filling defect in the lower pole of the kidney, and the there is crowding at the margin of called as a parenchymal beating. And here we see renal contour, and there is super superimposed second second another contour. So this is a double contour. So these are all abnormal finding which can be picked up, and it suggests that there is some mass. Uh, uh, renal mass is there and which needs to be further investigated. Sometimes there is parenchymal thinning, and when there is a parenchymal thinning of the kidney, which is seen on the nephro and pelvic phases, always examine the underlying pelvic nervous system. For example, here there is a dilatation of the pelvic nervous system, there is a clubbing of the pelvic nervous system, and we see the thinning of the parenchyma. So, this is typically at the upper poles. This is usually occurs with the patient's reflex injury. So, when you, there is thinning, always look at the underlying pelvic system. If the parenchymal thinning is in between the calyces, for example, the calyces are normal, but the thinning is in between. So, this typically occurs with patient with renal infarcts. After finishing the nephrology film, where we have seen the size, contour, position, axis, and the thickness of the parenchyma, next. Is the pylographic phase. Now here we see the normal nice of uh, opification of the uh, kidney, normal nephrogram in the on one minute film. But on later phases, what we are seeing is the right kidney is becoming more dense. There is no opification of the pelvial system, where on the left the nephrogram is receding, but the pylogram is seen. So what is there is something wrong going on here. So the, this should this should be this should alert us. This is called as a persistently dense nephrogram without visualization of the uh, pyloraphic phase. So any deviation from the normal temporal evolution of the contrast uh, expression should alert us that something is wrong here. So in this case, there there is obstruction distally which is not allowing the contrast to excrete into the pelvic nephrogram. Okay. Secondly, this pyloraphic phase normally we see the normal opposition of the pelvic system here, and there is obvious dilatation of the pelvic nervous system. Now, this indicates that there is some obstruction here. But on pyloraphic film, we are able to grade the um, uh, grade the um, amount of hydronephrosis. For example, here we can see the papillary relation very nicely seen. But here we can see the loss of fornication angle. The calyces are dilated and there is loss of papillary impression. Okay, in, as against here, the papillary impression is seen very nicely. Here the papillary impression is gone, and here there is curbing, curbing of calyces. So depending on the uh, amount of fornational angle dilatation or calyceal clubbing or loss of papillary impression, grading of hydronephrosis is done, which on the pyloraphic phase itself. Now, the contrast which is excreting from the tubules through the papilla, it can show various abnormal things which can be picked on the pyloraphic phase. So, here we see the increased density at the level of pyramid, okay, at the papilla, and but there are no tubular striations here. So, this is called a papillary block. As against that, there is an increased parenchymal opacity associated with the linear linear striations within. It. So this is seen typically in patients with tubular tubular ectasia. As against that, along with tubular uh, dry, uh, the papillary blush and tubular striations, there are calculi which are seen here. So this is seen with medullary sponge kidney. Sometimes, what happens uh, in some pathologies, there will be accumulation of the contrast within the papilla. So this typically occurs with a papillary necrosis. Coming to the evaluation of the calyces and the uh, 
renal pelvis most common abnormality which is found is the filling defect now when the filling defect is found let us look at the margins of the filling defect for example here it's a very smooth filling defect so it could be due to a calculus most common cause or it could be due to a papilla could be a fungal ball or so many causes there as against that the filling defect which is seen here it's very irregular multiple and extending and infiltrating into the renal pelvis as well typically called as the moth eaten kind of thing seen in the tuberculosis over here there is a large irregular filling defect extending from the pelvis and causing the blunting of the calyces seen with tcc so after evaluating the nephrogram and the pelvic calyces system will come to evaluation of the ureter now the normal course of ureter is that it will smoothly transit from the renal pelvis will course medial and over to the psoas muscle over the outer half of the lumbar transverse processes till the lower lumbar vertebrae where it will have a normal slight medial deviation due to presence of the iliac vessels at the level of iliac vessels then it will cross laterally and will parallel the inner margin of the pelvis and then it will insert into the bladder at the uh, intramural course through the bladder so this is the normal course any deviation any uh, abnormal abnormal course will be, will be picked up on the IVB okay and as you notice on the left side though ureter is not dilated it is not seen in its entirety so this is a segmental non visualization which is very common which is very no normal and it occurs due to the peristalsis of the uh, ureter and in cases of suspected obstruction what we need to do is additional views or compression views or oblique views that will help us to uh, clear the doubt that this is just the segmental non visualization and not the actual obstruction okay now look at the caliber always note the caliber normally it should be about 5 mm more than 5 mm should be abnormal okay and then we will see the filling defects presence or absence of the filling defects as i told you the normal course of the here we see instead of going laterally along the lateral margin of the pelvis the inner margin of the pelvis the ureter is seen coursing more medial not the right but the left also so when the ureter course medially like this or when definitely when the ureter is lying over the pedicle of the lumbar vertebrae or when the inter ureteric distance is less than 5 cm then we should suspect the medial deviation of the ureter and there are many causes for medial deviation of the ureter it could be due to the retrocaval ureter or cervical fibrosis or multiple causes as mentioned here similarly there is lateral deviation so when we will suspect the lateral deviation when instead of going over the outer half of the lumb, uh, transverse processes of the lumbar vertebrae when the ureter lies more than 1 cm beyond these then we should suspect the lateral deviation again there are uh, many causes of the lateral deviation uh, like lymphadenopathy or pelvic masses or respiratory okay then after evaluating the course of the ureter let us see the caliber of the ureter very obviously we can see the abnormal dilatation of the ureter and as you can see the ureter is coursing medially it is coursing more medially probably reaching up to the pedicle so this is the typical retrocaval ureter you see here again the ureter the pelvic calyx system is dilated entire ureter is dilated up to its termination okay and here we see the filling defect so this is the typical uh, of the bibonacci so the while evaluating the causes of uh, a ureter dilatation most common cause is uh, the calculus but this film will uh, the other causes should be also kept in mind now here we can see we see the dilatation of the and tapering of the distal terminal portion of the ureter the distal and the pelvic ureter is dilated but there is no dilatation of the proximal pelvic calyx system so it is typically occurs with patient with the primary mega ureter so because the ureter is highly mobile determine the significance of ureter deviation 
which is C-naught urography, needs to be further evaluation with the cross-section imaging. After seeing the deviation, there are multiple causes of the uh, filling defect or the uh, narrowing of the ureter, which can be again, narrowing can be due to the stricture or interluminal causes or extraluminal causes. IVP will help, IV, IU will, IVU will be help us to delineate the interluminal causes, but for luminal and extraluminal causes, IV, IVU has very limitation, okay. For example, here we can see the filling defect in the ureter as well as the, in the left ureter system, but we do not know what this filling defect is, it could be due to the stone, multiple stone or it could be due to the uh, tuberculosis or could be due to TCC. But the role of IVU is to determine the level and the site of obstruction, okay. So, the, here typically there are multiple filling defects and distal to the filling defect we see the dilatation of the ureter. So, this typically occurs with the process of chronic processes going on, this is called as the goblet appearance of the ureter, okay. This case is typically uh, is a, a, a multiple TCC. There are additional views I told you, uh, as I uh, told you, the oblique view and the prone view. The basically oblique view is taken when we suspect the calculi are there, there are various calcification are there, whether to, uh, whether these calcification are there in the course of the ureter or they are outside the course of the ureter, to delineate that usually the oblique view is helpful. And the prone view, when we cannot apply compression in the patient, in those patients the prone view helps us to delineate the distal ureter which usually uh, in the uh, may not be evident normally. So, the making the patient prone it will make the distal ureter dependent and it will also allow the bowel gases to separate. So, it helps to uh, evaluate the course of the ureter. So, by the 15 to 30 minutes normally the bladder gets filled and the full bladder fill on full bladder fill we will see the homogeneous representation of the contrast. As against that, here we see the contrast material is opacified and it has a lobulated contour. And as against, see the normally we do not see the bladder wall, but here the bladder wall is very seen very distinctly and it is thickened. So, this is suggestive of cystitis. Other pathologies which can be picked up are the contrast will out poaching arising from the bladder. So, this is a typical diuretic In the in the pelvis, uh, the, on the full bladder film, we may see impression normally also. Typically, in females, on the superior surface of the bladder, could be due to the uterus or the bulky ovaries or ovarian cysts. And in the females, the filling defect or impression seen at the base of the bladder is typically due to the uh, vaginal masses. In case of males, the filling defect which is seen at the base of bladder is typically due to the prostate and here we see the changes of bladder outlet obstruction in the form of multiple diuretic line. The next thing we can evaluate on the full bladder film is the filling defect, though uh, sometimes it is, uh, sometimes it helps us to uh, tell whether this filling defect is either benign pathology or malignant pathology. For example, in this case, the smooth filling defect, large filling defect seen in the patient is this could be calculus, but in the setting of trauma, in patient with pelvic trauma, this most likely represents the hematoma. As against that, this irregular filling defect with uh, uh, with contrast material uh, seeping in, in, in between, this is typically called as a stipple sign, and it suggests that there is some neoplasm or some neoplastic pathology going on there. Okay. And what is the importance of post void film? As we have seen, the post void film needs to be taken immediately. Here we see the full bladder film, normally obesified uh, bladder, but in case in patient with hematuria, where there is a high suspicion of bladder pathology, post void films are very must. For example, here in the same patient on the post void film, we see the filling defect, which was not evident on the full bladder film. So, this highlighting the importance of the post void film uh, and uh, showing the filling defects suspected for the TCC. Post void films are also very helpful in cases where there, there, are, there is dilatation of the proximal parental urinary tract. 
For example, there is dilatation of the pelvis. Ureters are dilated on the earlier films. On the full battle film also, the uh, the urinary tract is dilated. If the dilatation disappears on the post war film, then it tells us that this dilatation was secondary to the physiologic change. If the dilatation persists even on the post war film, then it means there is some significant obstruction is there and which needs to be okay. So, the delayed films. Uh, normally, uh, in cases uh, up to one hour, the entire study is usually over. But in cases, for example, in patient with uh, upper renal tract obstruction, where there is dilated pelvic system, the ureter is not visible till yet. In those cases, the delayed films are uh, very helpful. The delayed films usually taken uh, uh, with a particular sequence uh, up to eight hour. So, uh, up to one hour, the normal uh, films are taken. Followed by the second film at two hour. After that at four hour. After that at eight hour. Even up to eight hour, if there is no opacification of the ureter or there are uh, the contrast has not came uh, to the pelvic cancer system, then in these cases a direct 24 hour film is taken. Or in some centers, usually what they do is they directly take the low dose uh, KUB to see the uh, cause of obstruction in such cases. Okay, so this is a normal uh, IVP IVU uh, sequence, and uh, the various films, how to interpret them, uh, wh what things to be seen at each each, part uh, each particular film. We have seen those things, and after finishing uh, this study, the in a after care, the patient needs to be assured. Always check the IV site, ensure the hydration of the patient, and always look for the reaction in between. Okay. Uh, during the procedure, complication may occur. This can be due to either the contrast media or can be due to technique. Okay, due to contrast media, usually the reaction occurs which can be mild, moderate, or severe. Nowadays, due to presence of low osmolar non identified contrast media, the reactions are very less, but still we need to monitor for them. And due to technique, for example, due to presence of abdominal compression, some patient might uh, develop discomfort, and uh, that needs to be uh, taken care of. So after uh, learning all these, what are the advantages of the IVU? Okay, it is gives the rapid overview of the entire unit tract. Detailed anatomy of the collecting system can be seen. Demonstrate the calcification, uh, whether the, those are in the unit tract or lying outside the unit tract. It will be sensitive for the site of obstruction. Okay, and of course the low cost uh, examination, but it has a disadvantage. Okay, it depends on the kidney function. Suppose the serum creatinine level is higher, uh, kidney is not functioning well. We may not see opacification of the pile, uh, uh, nephrogram and the pilogram, so it will uh, uh, it will not be of any use. Again, uh, this uh, extra um, like perinephric spaces or outside pathologies will not be uh, evaluated, which may be the cause for the uh, unit drug obstruction. Uh, particular note on in, in cases of children uh, when. IV is going to be performed in children. We should always have ultrasound mandatory because the usually these patients are either with antenatal uh, hydronephrosis or uh, with uh, some congenital abnormality suspected in the patient. So ultrasound will help us to tailor our technique such that we'll answer the specific question in mind. So we'll uh, avoid the unnecessary exposure in these films. Okay, in this patient. Of course, the use of filters, grids, and shutters to minimize the area of exposure and to minimize the radiation dose to the patient. The initial KOB is usually not needed. Plain film is usually not added in children unless uh, it's just the, the calculus uh, is the or the calculi are the suspected pathology. Otherwise, in other pathologies, plain KOB is usually not needed. And uh, the sequence of uh, films should be the one early renal view film at the final minute and later the at 15 to 20 minutes, entire KUV film is taken. Okay. These are the two or three films which are usually necessary. And in cases of pathology, in cases if suppose we, we detect some hydronephrosis or something, in those cases only the daily film needs, needs to be taken. Uh, in children, the contrast dose needs to be monitored. As I told you, after four years of age, one ml per kg contrast uh, can be given, but before that, at one year, 2.5 ml per kg at 2 year 2 ml per kg and at 3 year 1.5 ml per kg. The goal of all these changes in the periodic patient is to avoid the radiation dose 
and unnecessary fuel. Okay, uh, diuretic stereography is particularly used in uh, pediatric patients also. The typically uh, furosemide is given intravenously 1 milligram per kilogram, maximum 20 up to 20 milligram can be given and it is given 20 minutes before the uh, study. Usually the 5 minutes uh, before or five, at the time of injection of the contrast only the furosemide is given. Okay. So, uh, this is the paper which is presented in 2010, it says that the conventional IUU study is still the first modality of choice to study the urinary system in our region so, and it is the, the study of choice even in the tertiary care rectal center the role of conventional IUU remains for a quite long time. So, it uh, again uh, highlights the importance of the IUU in the current uh, era also. Okay. So, let us see few uh, cases uh, as a quiz. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, earlier urographic image uh, where we see there is opacification and dilatation of the pelvic collection system, though there is no uh, yet opacification of the renal pelvis and the ureter. On denate films, here we see again the dilation has the dilation has uh, increased, there is ballooning of the pelvis, and we do not see opacification of the ureter. So, what could be the cause in this case? Then? Yeah, correct, uh, Mr. Uh, yeah, Dr. Ranji. Yeah, right, you are right. So, this is very uh, correct uh, the POG obstruction. Now, in POG obstruction, yeah, yes, uh, correct, correct, sir. correct, doctor. Uh, POG obstruction. Um, so, in these cases, the need for delayed filming is there. And uh, why? Because, because of the presence of urine in the pelvic anesthesia system, the contrast which is getting accumulated will not be evident on the immediate films. So, to allow the contrast to get and opacify the electrical system, we need to wait and we need to take the delay. Typically, in these cases, it may be taken up to 24 hours to see the dilatation up to this extent and the non gestion of the ureter. Sometimes, in cases where we are doubtful whether this is the POG obstruction or it's just some other uh, external pelvis or some other pathology. In this case also, the diuretic urography uh, is very helpful uh, with the use of uh, after giving the furosemide and obtaining the film. If the dilatation worsens, then it uh, says that the there is a functional obstruction at the PUJ. And if the dilatation diminishes or it goes, then it indicates that it is not due to the PUJ obstruction or some other pathology. So, delayed imaging is essential in this case. Okay, this is a, a, a last question here. Uh, now, here we see the 10 minute film, there we see the nephrogram normal, the opposition of the pelvic system and the ureter normal. But after the next film, on the 15 minute film, what we are seeing is there is an opposition of the kidneys, there is only nephrogram, and the pyrogram has is not seen. So, what is wrong? Whether this the timing is wrong or uh, what do you think what is going on here? Uh, hypotension exactly. So, uh, the, uh, this is for resident, uh, please remember this whenever there is a there is no uh, life cycle parenchymalysis, this is a typically the hypotension, this is a response to the uh, hypotension which can be secondary to the contrast which we have given to the patient. So, it, the patient has developed reaction which is evident on the meeting and this should alert us to uh, immediately abandon the procedure and stabilize the patient. Okay. So, these are the two, uh, two cases. So, um, So, uh, so that is it, uh, that is it for today, mm, that is it for today, we have learned few basics, we have revisited uh, the IVU, uh, how to interpret, what things to be seen, all uh, the basics uh, things and uh, uh, where the technique needs to be modified, what are the additional views and that is it. Thank you, thank you for your patience hearing.